to our service uh, this last Sunday after Trinity. We're here again in St Paul's and Sally's playing for us. Thank you very much Sally. We're going to follow the service as usual from the Worship at Home booklets which I know most of you have and if you haven't they're available in PDF form on websites. So we're going to begin this morning with our first hymn which is when morning gilds the skies. and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now our psalm this morning is Psalm 1. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners nor sat in the assembly of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. Like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the wicked, 
It is not so with them. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not be able to stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Glory, Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now Chris Stanis Treat has our first reading for us. The reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 8. Paul's ministry in Thessalonica. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or the pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 22. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Philip is going to bring us our reflection. Okay. A number of years ago, my Saturday paper featured a regular short column with the title Frantic Semantics. To simplify a complex subject, semantics is the study of the meaning of words, and the writer of Frantic Semantics looked at the way the meaning of many of the words in regular use today have changed over the years. Sometimes the passing years have changed their meaning entirely, and the Prayer Book Society have felt the need to produce a short guide to the language of the Prayer Book for those unfamiliar with it. I remember as a child singing the hymn, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun, and being intrigued by the line, 
let every creature rise and bring peculiar honours to our King. I tried to imagine what those peculiar honours might be, because from its original meaning as something special, in modern usage the word peculiar often means strange or bizarre. And let's not stray too far into the subject of royal peculiars, which sadly are not the strange habits of kings and queens, but describe a parish or church exempt from the jurisdiction of the diocese in which it lies, but is subject to the direct jurisdiction of the monarch. Someone I know was recently married in the chapel of St Mary Undercroft in the Palace of Westminster, which is one such royal peculiar. In our Gospel reading this morning, Jesus responded to a question about which is the greatest commandment by citing two, thus giving an early example of Bogoff, buy one, get one free. I recite a version of this, what we describe as the summary of the law, at every service of Holy Communion. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love is central to both commandments. But what do we understand by the word love? What does it mean today? A word so important, Jesus claimed that on it hang all the law and the prophets. I remember one of my interviewers at the residential selection conference I attended asking me what was the most important thing I wanted people to know. My reply was that I wanted them to know that God loves them. And I hope that over the past 14 years since my ordination I've kept that ideal. What, however, does the word love mean? How is it used today? When I have people tell people that God loves them, what do they understand by that? And perhaps, perhaps just as importantly, how are we to express that love to others? Because love is not a gift that we are given so that we can bank it and keep it for our own benefit. Today the word love is used in many different ways. We love many things. Chocolate, football, fishing, going on holiday. On Monday my paper listed the top ten things which a survey had revealed people love to do. At the top of the list was walking, followed by reading, eating out, watching films, gardening, Travelling, cooking, doing puzzles, socialising, and last of all, baking. All these activities have to do with feelings and the enjoyment we derive from doing them. However, this use of the word love is far removed from the meaning Jesus gave it. For him, to love God and to love neighbour was set within the context of a commandment. You shall love. That removes love from it being a warm, fuzzy feeling we get when we do things we enjoy to something that we need commitment and dedication. We shall love God, both in the good times when everything in the garden is rosy and in the bad times when life is not easy, when there is pain and the future is uncertain. Equally, we shall love our neighbours, have their best interests at heart, even if we dislike them, and our human instinct tells us to run a mile from them. In her commentary on the imperative to love, the writer Debbie Thomas says she doesn't think it's a coincidence or a mistake that Jesus inextricably links love of God with love of neighbour. Each reinforces, reinterprets and revives the other. As heirs of the incarnation, we cannot love God while we refuse to love what God loves. We cannot love God in a disinfected, disembodied way that doesn't touch the dirt and depths of this world. Our love is meant to be robust and muscular, hands-on and intimate. If we are to take anything away from our reading this morning, it's an invitation an invitation to reflect on how we understand love and both love God and our neighbour as ourselves with integrity. May God who loved the world so much that he sent his only son to be our saviour, the ultimate expression of love, give us his grace and enable us to do so.
going to finish this uh, reflection with a reading. It's actually a blessing, actually. And I'm going to exempt you from... Well, you're going to give one at the end of the service, Patricia. But I thought this was so good. I found it on Facebook at Christmas, which just proves that some things on Facebook actually are quite good. And it comes from a black church prayer book. The world is now too dangerous and too beautiful for anything but love. May your eyes be so blessed you see God in everyone. Your ears so you hear the cry of the poor. May your hands be blessed that everything you touch is a sacrament. Your lips so you speak nothing but the truth with love. May your feet be so blessed you run to those who need you. And may your heart be so opened, so set on fire that your love, your love, changes everything. May the blessing of the God who created you, loves you and sustains you, be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you, Philip. We're going to sing another hymn now. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Father God, thank you that you are a God of love. We give thanks and praise that though we may fail to follow your word and live our lives according to your commandments, that you still love us. Thank you for the hope we have in Jesus. Help us to be more Christ-like each day, showing your love to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world, your world. Overall, it doesn't feel as if things are going well. We pray for the current situation with coronavirus, not just in our local areas, but nationally and internationally. We pray for wise leadership, cooperation between leaders, and that countries and institutions can work together to find a cure to the virus. Thank you for all those who are working to keep us safe. Help us to work with the current restrictions, even though it is so hard to be separated from family and friends. Help us to find ways of keeping in touch with those we know to be isolated and to show care and love for our neighbours and strangers. 
We pray for all those who are working in key areas. Please keep them safe and sustain them during difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your church and all who serve in so many different ways. Sustain our church leaders and help them to continue to be salt and light in the world. For all of us as part of your church, help us to remember Jesus' words, to love you with our hearts and souls and minds, and to love our neighbours as ourselves. Help us to reach out to one another, always with love, remembering that at this time we are all living through unusual circumstances, with the extra stress and anxiety that all of that brings with it. Help us to love as Jesus loved, who saw beyond the surface to what was going on underneath with those he encountered. Help us to behave with gentleness, love and courage towards others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we hold up to you all those who are suffering in mind, body and spirit. We ask that you would surround them with your love and compassion and abide with them. We bring before you those known to us who are ill, those going through difficult circumstances and those who are recently bereaved. Let them feel your comforting presence, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, during this coming week, we ask that you help us to draw closer to you. Help us to be guided by your love and to demonstrate that love to everyone with whom we come into contact. Help us to see you reflected in those encounters, that through loving others as ourselves, we will also be demonstrating our love for you and glorifying your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we conclude our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer with the traditional words. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Love Divine or Love's Excelling.
Turn to our service books. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.